So now that the, the bill is passed and the, the, we're just trying to schedule the signing ceremony, which is obviously going to be a big deal, uh, and no doubt the president will extend bipartisan invitations to attend the signing ceremony, uh, including possibly to Mitch McConnell. It'll be interesting to see if Mitch McConnell feels he's allowed to go there or whether that'll get him in too much trouble with Donald Trump. Yeah, well, you know, my guess is he wouldn't show up, but um, I think Mitch is, Mitch is probably beyond worrying about Donald Trump too much for himself. What he worries about now is, is his colleagues in the Senate, uh, some of whom are very vulnerable in, uh, in next year's elections. And uh, I think he's going to want to play that, uh, that calculation very carefully uh, because, you know, his, his primary mission is to regain control of the Senate so he can be majority leader again. Uh, not that he has any policy objectives in mind by uh, becoming a majority leader, but that's that's what he wants to be. And so I, I think that's that's the way he'll play all of the, the next few months. There is a fascinating and long new profile of Mitch McConnell in The Washington Post in which you're quoted extensively. And that's where I learned how far back you go with Mitch McConnell, <laughs> which is actually much farther back than I do. I mean, I knew him as a Republican senator, a reasonable member of the Republican Senate in the 1990s. So I've been shocked to see what he has become. You are, it turns out, much less surprised uh, than I am. Uh, and you go back to when you were both, uh, you know, kids in Washington. Yeah, I was actually still, I met Mitch when I was still in college. And we uh, worked on a college, on a Senate, U.S. Senate campaign in 1968. We traveled around Kentucky together, setting up college campus organizations. I was a Republican then. And... Uh, a very liberal Republican, but you could be a liberal liberal Republican then. And and what struck me about Mitch then, and as nobody will be surprised to hear now, is that Mitch only cared about winning. That this was his mission was winning elections, winning power, and maintaining power. And that was when he was, I think he was probably 24, 25 years old at the time. But uh, he, he really hasn't changed. And he was a, a, a county executive here in, in Louisville, Kentucky, back in the, uh, in the 70s and early 80s. And he was quite a progressive uh, leader at that point, uh, was in favor of collective bargaining for public employees, actually was for uh, financial disclosures of campaign donors, actually even opened the door to public financing of campaigns. So... Uh, with, with him, it's it's really a matter of expediency how he how he feels about different policy uh, matters. But uh, you know he's he's been very successful. Uh, I, I've said before he's he's the most focused person I've ever known in a competition other than Tiger Woods. Yeah, that that I get that part I get. <laughs> uh, but I I was surprised, and I really did feel enlightened by reading your insights uh, on Mitch McConnell in, in that Washington Post piece and what you're telling us right now. Because I made the mistake during earlier parts of his career of thinking he actually meant what he said and that he would hold to this uh, over a period of time. And what what you point out in the Washington Post is no. He'll just go wherever the power play is at any given moment. Exactly. And, you know, he is to a certain extent, well, to a very large extent, shameless. I mean, he doesn't care about being called hypocritical. Uh, his position on the Merrick Garland nomination and then on the uh, Amy Coney Barrett nomination, totally uh, uh, 180 degrees apart. But, but that doesn't bother him. And, and partially because he knows in this environment he can get away with it. And most, most politicians can get away with it these days. The, the voters don't really hold many politicians accountable for, what, uh, for contradictions in their, in their own personal positions.